Hello folks, welcome back to Trend Top. According to snack food folklore, the potato chip was invented in 1853 by a chef named George Krum at a restaurant called Moon's Lake House in Saratoga Spring, New York. Angered when a customer, some sources say it was none other than the Cornelius Vanderblit, returned his french fried potatoes to the kitchen for being too thick. Crumb sarcastically shaved them paper thin and sent the plate back out. The customer, whoever he was, and others around him loved the thin potatoes. Crumb soon opened his own restaurant across the lake and his policy of not taking reservations did not keep the customers from standing in line to taste his potato chips. The popularity of potato chips quickly spread across the country, particularly in Speccasies, spawning a flurry of home-based companies Van de Kamp's Saratoga Chips opened in Los Angeles on January 6th of 1915. In 1921, Earl Wise, a grocer, was stuck with an overstock of potatoes. He peeled them, sliced them with a cabbage cutter, and then fried them according to his mother's recipe and packaged them in brown paper bags. Leonard Jap and George Gavora started Jay's Foods in the early 1920s, selling potato chips, nuts, pretzels, the speccasies from the back of the dilapidated truck. The chips were commonly prepared in someone's kitchen and then delivered immediately to stores and restaurants or sold on the street. Shelf life was virtually nil. Two innovations paved the way for mass production in 1925. The automatic potato peeling machine was invented. A year later, several employees at Laura Scudder's potato chip company ironed sheets of wax paper into bags. Potato chips received a further boost when the U.S. government declared them an essential food in 1942, allowing factories to remain open during World War II. In many cases, potato chips were the only ready-to-eat vegetables available. After the war, it was commonplace to serve chips with dips, French onion soup mixed stirred into your sour cream with a perennial favorite. Television also contributed to the chips' popularity as Americans bought snacks with them when they settled before their television sets each night. In 1969, General Mills and Procter and & Gamble introduced fabricated potato chips, Chippos and Pringles, respectively. They were made from potatoes that had been cooked, mashed, dehydrated, reconstituted into dough, and cut into uniform pieces. They further differed from previous chips in that they were packaged into breakproof, oxygen-free canisters. The Potato Chip Institute filed suit to prevent General Mills and Procter Gamble from calling their products chips. Although the suit was dismissed, the USDA did stipulate that the new variety must be labeled as potato chips made from dried potatoes. Although still on the market, fabricated chips have never been achieved through the popularity of the original. Today, potato chips are the most popular snack in the United States. According to a Snack Food Association, potato chips constitute 40% of snack food consumption, beating out pretzels and popcorn in spite of the fact that hardly anyone thinks potato chips are nutritionists. Raw Materials Even though Earl Wise started his business with old potatoes, today's product is made from farm-fresh potatoes delivered daily to manufacturing plants. The sources vary from season to season in April and May. Potatoes come from Florida, June, July, and August bring potatoes from North Carolina and Virginia. In the autumn months, the Dakotas supply the majority of potatoes. During the winter, potato chip manufacturers depend on their stored supplies of potatoes. Stored potatoes are kept at a constant temperature between 40 to 45 degrees Celsius until several weeks before they are to be used. They are then moved to a reconditioning room that is heated from 70 to 75 degrees. Size and type are important in potato selection. White potatoes that are larger than a golf ball but smaller than a baseball are the best. It takes 100 pounds of raw potatoes to produce 25 pounds of chips. The potatoes are fried in either corn oil cottonseed oil or a blend of vegetable oils. Antioxidizing agent is added to the oil to prevent rancidity. To further ensure purification, the oil is passed through a filtration system daily. Salt and other flavoring ingredients such as powdered sour cream and onion barbecue flavor are purchased from outside sources. Flake salt is used rather than crystal salt. Some manufacturers treat the potatoes with chemicals such as phosphoric acid, citric acid, hydrochloric acid or calcium chloride to reduce the sugar level and thus improve the product's color. The bags are designed and printed by the individual potato chip manufacturer. The manufacturing process 1. When the potatoes arrive at the plant, they are examined and tasted for quality. A half dozen or so buckets are randomly filled. 
Some are punched with holes in their cores so that they are to be tracked through the cooking process. The potatoes are examined for green edges and blemishes. The pile of defective potatoes is weighed. If the weight exceeds a company's preset allowance, the entire truckload can be rejected. Number two, the potatoes move along a conveyor belt to the various stages of manufacturing. The conveyor belts are powered by gentle vibration to keep breakage to a minimum. The stoning and peeling. Three, the potatoes are loaded into a vertical helical screw conveyor which allows stones to fall to the bottom and pushes the potatoes up to a conveyor belt to the automatic peeling machine. After they have been peeled, the potatoes are washed with cold water. Slicing. Four, the potatoes pass through a revolving impaler and a presser that cuts them into paper-thin slices between 0.066 to 0.072 in thickness. Straight blades produce regular chips while rippled blades produce ridged potato chips. 5. The slices fall into the second cold water wash that removes the starch released when the potatoes are cut. Some manufacturers who market their chips as natural do not wash the starch off the potatoes. Frying and salting. 7. The slices pass under air jets to remove the excess water as they flow into the 40 to 75 feet trues filled with oil. The oil temperature is kept at 350 to 375 Celsius. Paddles gently push the slices along. As the slices tumble, salt is sprinkled from receptacles positioned above the true at the rate of about 1.75 pounds of salt to each 100 pound of chip. Cooling and sorting. And eight, at the end of the trough, a wire mesh belt pulls out the hot chips as the chips move along the mesh conveyor belt. Excess oil is drained off, the chips begin to cool. They then move under an optical sorter that picks out any burnt slices and removes them from the puffs of air. They then move under an optical sorter that picks out any burnt slices and removes them with puffs of air. Packaging. 10. The chips are conveyed to a packaging machine with a scale as the preset weight of chips is measured. A metal detector checks the chips once more for any foreign matter such as metal pieces that could have come with the potatoes or been picked up in the frying process. 11. The bags flow down from a roll. A central processing unit code on the bag tells the machine how many chips should be released into the bag. As the bag forms and gates open and allow the proper amount of chips to fall into the bag. 12. The filling process must be accomplished without letting an overabundance of air into the bag, while also preventing the chips from breaking. Many manufacturers use nitrogen to fill the space in the bags. 13. Some companies pack potato chips in 1-0 cans of various sizes. The chips flow down a chute into the cans. Workers weigh each can, make any necessary adjustments, and attach a top to the can. Quality Control Taste samples are made from each batch throughout the manufacturing process, usually at a rate of once per hour. The tasters check the chips for salt, seasoning, moisture, color, and overall flavor. Color is compared to charts that show acceptable chip colors. Preventing breakage is a primary goal for potato chip manufacturers. Companies have installed safeguards at various points in the manufacturing process to decrease the chances for breakage. The heights that chips fall from conveyor belts or fryers have been decreased. Plastic conveyor belts have been replaced with wide mesh stainless steel belts. Byproducts and waste. Rejected potatoes and peelings are sent to farms to be used as animal feed. The starch that is removed in the rinsing process is sold to a starch processor the future. Potato chips show no sign of declining in popularity. However, the public's increased demand for low-fat foods has put manufacturers on a fast track to produce a reduced calorie chip that pleases the palate as well. In the late 1990s, Procter & Gamble introduced Olestra, a fat substitute that was being test marketed in a variety of products including potato chips. Food technicians are using computer programs to design a crunchier chip. Upper and lower waveforms are fed into the computer at varying amplitudes, frequencies, and phases. The computer then spits out the corresponding models. Researchers are also working on genetically engineered potatoes with less sugar content since it is the sugar that produces brown spots in or on chips.